Hey guys, this is going to be a shorter video looking into a topic a lot of you have been asking me about, hero titles. Today I want to talk about the active version of the magician archetype, the witch. Specifically, the witch's familiar. To quote Wikipedia, in folklore, familiar spirits were believed to be supernatural entities whose main purpose was to serve magical practitioners. They could be animal or humanoid shapeshifters, or even things like fairies, spirits, and demons. Witches and heirs both have familiars that act pretty much like their mythic counterparts. They might protect a young magician as they come into their new powers, or carry out errands at a powerful wizard's request. But the familiars in an heir's arc are basically sidekicks with varying degrees of competence. Heirs tend to struggle with the power they already hold. So even in the worst case, heirs have influence over their familiars. So any abuse of power carried out between them tends to be suffered by the familiar, not the heir. The familiar in a witch's arc, however, presents the young hero with the central conflict of her journey. The witch carries the dual roles of scion and caretaker. Through her familiar, she wields influence over reality that is nothing short of apocalyptic, but they share a visceral give-and-take relationship that tends to come back to bite her. All the might with which it protects and empowers her, the familiar also leverages to control the witch. And so the witch's struggle is for the right to hold any power at all. To be clear, this take on the witch archetype is a bit older than Homesuck. Witches as a depiction of one bound to the service of a being that in turn grants one power over others are quite common in our culture, dating at least as far back as the Salem Witch Trials, when it was thought that witches' souls were bound to the service of the Dark Master who empowered them, Satan. So in Homestuck, you can literally gauge the successful self-actualization of a witch by how successfully she manages to assert her will over that of her familiar, establishing herself as the dominant party, and gaining the power to wield her own magic as she chooses. Our witches of space and time, Jade Harley and Amara Megiddo respectively, embody the furthest extremes of this paradigm. Jade's familiar is Bekaro, Earth's first guardian, an omnipotent being that can teleport to any point in the universe instantly by warping space around himself. Beck is also Jade's very good boy. What a good boy. Good dog. Best friend. Aww. While Beck is a little protective of Jade early on, he's totally devoted to his master. And his fate, while sad, leaves Jade squarely in charge, as she ends up taking his will and absorbing his powers into herself. Beck's devotion to his master also carries over to Jack Knorr, one of the main antagonists of Homestuck, who inherits both his freakish powers and his canine instincts, giving Jade similar power over him, forcing her to deal with an omnipotent maniac like he's just such a bad boy, bad dog, worst friend. Arg. Damara, the Witch of Time, isn't half as lucky. Her familiar is Homestuck's central antagonist, Lord English, who commands all of time within the boundaries of the story of Homestuck. The Lord of Time is the literal patriarch and sun god of the cast, comparable to mythological figures like Zeus, Yaldabaoth, or Gwyn from Dark Souls. All of time is subject to him the entire narrative shaped and directed by his inexorable will. And Amara is no exception. In one timeline, she finds herself bound to a life of slavery under his direct supervision, toiling across millennia, manipulating the entire history of a planet just to make it crueler and more vicious. In another timeline, where Lord English isn't present, but where true freedom from the Alpha timeline is impossible, she ends up so broken she decides she wants to serve Lord English, and delights in using her time powers to torture and sabotage her group of friends. Note that I'm not saying that witches that end up subservient are worse characters or people. Instead, I'm saying witches face circumstantially simultaneous variations of the same core life struggle, and a witch who overcomes that struggle ends up a happier person. To the degree that they fail, they'll be less happy. The fairy Pixies, the Witch of Life, is a more middle-of-the-road example to compare to. Her familiar is Gulbalib, an ambassador of the horror terrors that sleeps in Alternia's oceans and must be fed vast quantities of life. She's able to use their connection to establish an afterlife, which she seems pretty excited about. But after that, the fairy completely drops out of the narrative. And while she's happy, it's implied she only obtained a half victory by unwittingly serving the horror terrors all along. Now let's go a little deeper. 
remember that the classes are best understood as symbolic archetypes, patterns of behavior ingrained into the collective unconscious that enter reality either through instinctual behavior or in the imagination through fiction and role models. Take the Empress of Alternia, for example. After losing her empire and striking a deal with Lord English, the Empress is offered a new job and a new title, the alias of the Batter Witch. She also picks up another horror terror who serves as both her secret weapon and a way to thwart her ambitions and keep her bound to the agenda of Lord English. When roleplay is unhealthy enough, it can even force a change in the player's aspect, in which case they might end up with more than one familiar. Rose Lalonde, the Seer of Light, ends up attached to two familiars, one of Light and one of its opposing aspect, Void. Doc Scratch is an alias for the Devil, or Lucifer, and Lucifer is described as the Lightbringer, or Morning Star. And it's his manipulation that leads Rose to absolute corruption at the hands of the Horror Terrors. Note that the horror terrors represent void to Rose, rather than life. The Pixies girls experience the horror terrors as a source of strength that enables them to manipulate their respective societies. To Rose, they embody a dark, incomprehensible collective. Same creature, but two different experiences of reality filtered through two different aspects. Keep that in mind as we look at our last two examples coming from two of our heroes of hope. Aridan Ampora and Jake English. Aridan, inspired to follow Rose's unhealthy example, gets a glowing wand from a fairy and starts calling himself a science magician, and soon after decides to betray his friends and join Jack Nor's murderous crusade. He identifies Jack as the Lord of All Angels, equating his status in Aridan's mind to that of Lord English, and Aridan opts to serve him specifically in hopes of being spared. Jake English imitates a specific witch, Jade, who he remembers and admires as his powerful and loving grandma. Jake's faith in his best friend Dirk Strider leads to the creation of the Autoresponder, an omniscient AI version of Dirk that spends the early part of the story bullying and controlling Jake. But said faith also creates Brain Ghost Dirk, an imaginary friend version of Dirk in Jake's mind who he's able to literally will into existence to act as Jake's personal bodyguard and secret weapon, because that's how strong his faith in his best friend is. That covers all the examples of the witch's familiar that I've found in Homestuck so far. F I forgot a radio. Okay, so long story short, she's implied to be role-playing a witch during her ghost phase, when she orchestrates the beginning of the troll spurb session and thus causes the apocalypse. Her familiar is actually Damara, since she says she's being directed by the ancestors during this phase, and the handmaid is her personal ancestor. There's definitely more to say and we're sure to talk more about this later. This is just meant to be a quick and dirty set of examples, featuring one of Homestuck's clearest and most obvious symbols. I'm hoping this will give you an idea of the kind of patterns I'm looking out for. So what do you think? Did this change how you think about witches or Homestuck's classes in general? Want me to do more stuff like this in the future? Let me know in the comments and thanks! This video exists thanks to the support of my wise cohort of patrons. If you'd like to summon more videos like this onto your your screen, then you can join them. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's all for now. Until next time, keep rising.